that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Oh, hey there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to be checking out Don't Wait Daddy from Parker Brothers. This is for ages four and up. It's for two to four players. It'll take you about eh, ten minutes to play. And in Don't Wake Daddy, you and your kids are going to be attempting to not wake daddy, but still sneak to the refrigerator to get some yummy, yummy goodies out of it. But be on the lookout because there's babies and cats and dogs and all sorts of various different stuff in your house that is going to be loud and wake up daddy. And if you Wake up, Daddy! Bah! He freaks out, and then you have to go back to bed. Aww. What am I talking about? Let's open it up and save the place. All right, then. We're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Don't Wake Daddy. So first and foremost, we have a handy-dandy rule sheet. It is two pages, double-sided, no color. Uh, half of it is in Spanish, so it's really one pages, uh, one page double-sided. And it's a very, very simple game. You'll need it probably once or twice and never need it again, because the game is incredibly simple. So in this game, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be starting on your beds over here and trying to make it all the way to the delicious food in the refrigerator. But all the while, you don't want to wake up Daddy, who's in the middle of the board. But there's going to be TVs and bicycles and dog food and dogs and cats and birds and babies and slamming doors that are going to potentially wake up Daddy. And there's going to be numbers on these, which you're going to have to hit the alarm clock to see if Daddy wakes up for. Uh, so that's what you're going to be doing. Let's go over the components, then we'll get a little bit into the gameplay. So first and foremost, you're going to notice that Daddy is in the middle of the board. He's actually put together in two pieces. You can take this piece off right here. There is no batteries in this. It is all just done uh, mechanically, which is uh, always a nice thing. And the stocking cap is removable. When, you, uh, when Daddy wakes up, the stocking cap normally goes flying off, which really surprises the kids. So as you can see, he looks nice. He's sturdy. Uh, pretty well done. Next, we're going we're gonna to move him to the side so you can see what's going on, on the board right here. So this is going to be with a house. And as you can see, you're going to have all your obstacles around. There's going to be four beds over here because this is a, up to a four-player game. And that's where you're actually going to start on your unique color. Uh, next, you're going to have a spinner. The spinner is going to have all four colors on the board, green, yellow, red, and blue. And there's also going to be one spot with a star. That's a very unique spot because that's going to put you right at the front of the line. So even if you woke up, Daddy, and you had to go back to your bed and your opponent was right here, if you roll that star, you instantly get to go one spot in front of the person in first. So you'd go, boom, all the way to there. So even if you wake up, Daddy, you're never really out of the game, which is nice for a kid's game. Uh, so next, yeah, as you can see, the board looks pretty nice. Let's get to the cards. The cards, each you're going to separate out all these cards evenly amongst your all the players. And on them, you're going to have the various different symbols that are on the board. So as you can see, that one over there matches the, uh, the, the, the coat rack. That one's going to have the food symbol right there, the slamming door. But for each symbol that's on the board, you're going to have a corresponding card. And when you start the game, what you're going to do is you're going to evenly distribute the cards between the players. So we'll just pretend that's evenly distributed. Uh, we're going to set Daddy back in the middle of the board, and we'll show you a mock game, uh, a little bit of a mock gameplay so you can see exactly what's all going on. We're actually going to move Daddy over here so you can see the different pieces move. So we'll say the yellow one's going to go first. They flick the little flicker and they got a green, which means they're going to go to the first green spot. So red, blue, yellow, green, boom, they're going to go there. Now, they're going to look at the cards in their hand, and if they have the TV, they're fine. They don't have to hit the alarm clock six times, as you can see the numbers right there. So let's see if he's got the TV, and he does not have the TV in his hand. So the yellow guy is going to have to hit Daddy's alarm clock six times, because that's the number there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, he's safe. So his turn is now over. Now the red player is going to go. So they're going to flick the, the, the flicker again, and they got a red. So they're actually, it's not the best start. They're going to go to the roller skate spot. They're going to look in their hand to see if they have the roller skates. So let's see, they do not have the roller skates, uh, which means they're going to have to hit the button three times. So one, two, Three. Whew, didn't wake up dead. So next, yellow is going to go. They're going to flick it again, and they're going to get yellow, which means they'll go to the next yellow spot, which is this handy landy little tinkered guy soldier right here. And they don't have it. But for a good play example, we're actually going to show you, uh, we're going to cheat a little bit, and we're going to pretend like they do have it. So they say, oh, he's got it. So that means he doesn't have to hit the alarm, and he is safe right there, which means it's now the red player's turn. So red is going to flick it again, and they get blue, which means they're going to go to where the soccer ball is. Now we're going to look, we're going to see if they have the soccer ball. Uh, they do have it, so they don't have to do anything. Moving back over to yellow, we're going to flick it, 
and they got red, which means they'll go to the next red spot. And we're going to pretend uh, that they do have it so they don't have to flick it. So now we're going to go over to the red person right here. We're just going to pretend that we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to say, oh, look, I got the purple star. So when you get the purple star, you immediately get to go to the front of the line by one spot. So essentially, she'd skip all of this and go to right here, which coincidentally is a safe spot because there's no numbers. Uh, so let's just say that the next time yellow rolls a yellow and has to go to the cat. So, boom. He's on the cat. Let's make sure he doesn't have the cat. No cat, no cat. We're actually going to cheat and put the cat over here so I can show you how the gameplay works. No cat! So which means he's going to have to hit the button six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, he can't count, so he, well, we're going to do that again. One, two, three, four. Ah, he woke up Daddy! So as you can see, the cap went flying. Daddy woke up, which means the yellow guy has to go all the way back to his bed. Boom. So he's all the way back at the beginning. Now, one thing that is going to come to his advantage is that since he didn't have the yellow card, he's actually going to get that yellow cat card. So if he lands on it again, he's going to be safe. So these cards are going to be going from player to player around the board, depending on when people wake up daddy. So what you're going to do, you put his little stocking cap back on him, put him back on the bed, set him back in the middle, and continue to play. And then the first person who's able to get to the refrigerator over here is going to be the winner of Don't Wake Daddy. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Ah! Alrighty then, Don't Wake Daddy from Parker Brothers. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, the game's not going to be for everybody for two main reasons. The first and obvious one is that this is a children's game. Pure and simple, this is not a party game, this is not a drinking game. Uh, this is just 100% a children's game for, I'd say, ages 3 to 7 and 8, and once you get past that, you're kind of pushing it. So, keep that in mind if you're deciding on getting this game. Uh, another con I have with this is this is 100% luck. There is absolutely nothing you can do to increase your probability of winning this game unless you're cheating, and if you're cheating with young children, you're a terrible person. Um, but, but some people say, like, Uno's a luck-driven game. It's all luck. No, there's some things in Uno that you can do to potentially marginally increase your chance of winning. Not in this game. There is nothing you can do. Once you get in this car, this is on complete cruise control. Uh, you're all at the, the mercy of the flicker. And those are the two big cons of the game that, that is incredibly luck driven. It is purely luck driven, and it's a children's game. Moving on to the pros, I got this at Goodwill. And I was like, a dollar, I'll review it. If it stinks, I'll get rid of it. No biggie. This one will be on my shelf for as long as the kids don't destroy it. This game is fan freaking tastic. I could not believe how well this game has aged. I remember playing this as a kid and be like, man, that was a really fun game. And so I had a little bit of a nostalgia when I first got out. I was like, oh, there's Daddy. He's got his little stocking cap. And then I played it with my kids. And they loved it. And I played it again and 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 again. And I didn't get tired of it. Like, it was one of those rare kids games where it's like each time it was fun just seeing these kids' reactions. Because there's tons of really cool moments in this game. First, when you bust it out, let's just get to the components. The components are very, very well done. The cards, ho-hum, they're cards. Uh, the, but Daddy looks really cool. He's in the middle of the game board. The house looks really cool. It's got all the obstacles around it, like the cats and the dogs and the babies and the radios and the TVs and all that stuff. And it looks really cool. And it's really simple for the children to understand what's going on and how the game is played. The spinner works pretty well and it's held up very well. The bed mechanic works really cool. And what I really like about that is you never know when Daddy's going to wake up. You never do. Like, we've had, it, I believe, one that was as early as five clicks, and we've had one go up over 20 clicks. So you never know when he's going to get set off. So even if you think you're dead meat or you think you're safe, chances are you might be wrong, which really adds a unique aspect to the game. Also, I really like the fact that the kids are never out of the game. Like, yeah, they might be super close to winning, and then they wake up Daddy and they have to go all the way back. But the bottom line is, if they flick a star, boom, they're right back in first place again. Now, in an adult game, this would be the worst mechanic in the history of games, period. But for a children's game, it's really, really good. Because no matter how bad a child's doing, boom, one lucky flick, and they're in first place. And I like that an awful lot. Uh, another thing that's really cool is this is this is a very appealing game to watch. That was one thing that I noticed that 
you know, normally when I play a game with kids, we'll have one or two that stand around and watch, and we'll get distracted and go wander off. No, this game, they really stood around and watched because they wanted to know who was going to wake Daddy. And Mr. Forrest, oh, Mr. Forrest, woke up Daddy! And it's fun. It's fun to role-play in this game and be like, You woke up Daddy! Go back to bed! And all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Overall, don't wake Daddy. This game needs to get reprinted. Get on this, Parker Bros. Uh, really enjoy this game. If you see this at a thrift shop, flea market, Goodwill, something like that for dirt cheap, definitely pick it up. Your children will appreciate it and they will love you for it because it's a lot of fun. Big thumbs up for Don't Wake Daddy, the color matching action game. Uh, for more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. I'm supposed to say that part at the end, but oh well. Uh, also, if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button. And in the comments below, let me know what was your favorite child's game growing up. I don't remember the name of mine. It was something about squashing bugs. I eventually want to find it. They're like Play-Doh, and you have to uh, then set them back up, move around the board. I remember having just a boatload of fun with that game. But tell me in the comments below, what is your favorite children's game? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.